doesn't make sense to spend that much time writing when, when it's such a short amount of time to actually create it, you know. Uh, and as some examples of types of documentation, which would be your proposal to the client, or maybe if you're internal, um, it would be the your proposal to a manager that of what it is that, that you would like to see built. And and oftentimes this might not you might not ever if you're a contractor you might not ever see that that initial sort of like request of a project or you might not see the business requirements um, initially. But I would say that you should at least get a copy of them if they've made them um, in, in, inside of the, the business. Um, and then your user and functional requirements are really the documentation that is talking about the design and development and deployment of your system. Um, and unit testing, um, would be writing scripts for describing how the user should, when when you're in testing, how your testers will be approaching the system to make sure that it's free of bugs and that it is acceptable by the client. Um, and then, as a, in sort of the process of the sort of life cycle of development, that there would then be guides written to. Uh, give instruction to the user about how to use the system and different account levels or access levels would be described in there so that you know that if you're a an admin level user that you're it's very clear to you that you have certain accessible features that might not be accessible to other people so that when, when this is in deployment and when it's being used within a company, that there is something to go to that they can go, well, why isn't this working for me this way? Or how do I do this? Um, so, and then finally, uh, release notes. So as the system gets upgraded, um, talking about the features that have been added or bugs that have been fixed or, you know, whatever. And, you know, there there might also be other other forms of documentation um, that you could think of. Um, it, it might be something a little bit more informal, um, such as you know, just even just writing out bug tracking notes or maybe emails to back and forth. I mean, anything is documentation. It doesn't have to be a formal document. Uh, well, use cases are in the user and functional requirements. So. Could it maybe uh, technical white papers or marketing marketing uh, documents? Marketing, maybe. Yeah, I haven't actually. But yes, yeah, that would work. that would be applicable for if you were selling selling the system or like, yeah, yeah. So I just remembered that Stephen Gallagher was saying. That you wanted to count how many times you're saying um, and I'm noticing that. Um, a lot. <laughs> um, okay. Don't worry, we have it in a database. We're tracking it. You're tracking it. <laughs> uh, so, I think that probably most people here have heard of what a requirements document is, um, but there's always some confusion over what it actually should be. Um, and in a very, it's written in many places and, you know, quick, quick internet searches um, can give you a lot of information. Um, reading books, there's lots of, lots of textbooks and things that people have written about requirements and use cases. <coughs> um, and the most important thing that a requirements document is, is that it it says what the software, I'm going to just read my slide, it says it, it, what the software will do. Um, and the, it doesn't state how the software will do it. Now what does that mean? 
it means that it is not going to say how the developer created, wrote the code to make it do what it's going to do. It's describing how the system should behave once it's finished. Um, you don't have to write out every single script and where are you going to put a script trigger and what UI element you're going to stick into the, the design of the document. You can certainly present that as part of the document, but it should be understood that it's not your final, it's, it's a guide, not a, a final blueprint. You're not stuck with that when you're, when you're building and when you're designing. You should have some freedom to, to be able to know that, well, okay, we said it and just needs to do this. Now, I need to, I need to be the creative here and, and take this and go, okay, how am I going to make this do this? Um, you have use cases within the document that will you know, describe the path on how it should occur if, if you need to control where the data is flowing and where it's moving within the system and, and what the user reactions are in terms of the system reaction. But it's, that's defined there, but you can write it any way you want. Um, I mean, code it any way you want. Uh, and then it's also, it's really a written statement of what, what it is that you're doing. Um, and I'll go into further, I'll break, I'll break apart the sections of a requirements document um, a little bit further into this. So, yes? Question for you, Larry. Uh, do you make a distinction between a technical specification and a requirements document? Or in this case, are you saying they're both like in the same document? What would you call a technical specification? Uh, I would call it what you would <coughs> give a developer to specify. It specifies the technical piece of it that satisfies the requirements, kind of. Uh, yeah, okay, so I would I'm call that, that the... Part of the it's it's uh, how the software will do it. The technical side, right, yeah, technical side. There you go. Yeah, the, um, I, I would, although I would, I would argue that you are not writing, in terms of FileMaker, in terms of FileMaker, I would argue that you are not writing what the scripts are in, in your technical spec. I mean, okay. do, you, do you write scripts, what your scripts uh, are? Scripts, no. Yeah. Um, but I will be specific about, you know, this is FileMaker 10 deployment, with yes. these tables, and field, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah the fields, um, the layouts, the tables, and ERD, um, some sort of data flow that that would be as part of, I, and yes I would include that in this and in this, okay. in this and I would call that a functional specification um, but it doesn't I guess what I'm trying to get at is that it's not when you're doing the way that I see it is that scripts and script triggers are really the heart of of what it is that you're building, you know, it's it's telling it what to do, and and that that is something that is up to the developer to figure out how you're going to do that from the point at which you've decided that you understand what the system should should be for your client or the end user, and and getting so that. Um, so, last, in the past couple of years, we've kind of gone back and forth, and John's always asked me, he's like, give a simple doc requirements document, because we work in these documents that are um, huge, um, and, and how, do you, how do you tailor it down? How do you make it smaller? How do you make it accessible so that somebody who's working on a smaller project um, can can actually uh, go through and create a requirements document without spending 80 to 100 hours on it. Um, and so um, finding, being a little bit more creative about 